The question has inspired either philosophy or confusion. What is beyond the known limits of our universe? To answer that, we first need to define what we mean by universe. The usual narrative we have gone with is the universe has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It began over 13 billion years ago when it was tiny, hot, and dense. In less than a billionth of a second, that pinpoint-sized universe blew up to span more than a billion, billion times its original size through cosmological inflation. When inflation stopped, the universe continued expanding as it cooled. For the next 380,000 years, it would be so dense that no light would be able to travel through it. Our universe was an opaque, super-hot plasma of scattered particles. When it cooled enough for the first hydrogen atoms to form, the universe became transparent. If we consider all the things that could exist across all of space and time, then there's nothing else outside the universe. Even if the universe had a boundary of some sort, whatever you can imagine must still be inside that boundary. If the universe is infinite in size, you don't really need to worry about this. Infinite has no edge, so there's no outside to talk about. But when we talk about the observable universe, things change. The cosmos is only so old, and light only travels so fast, so there's a lot we don't know because we haven't received light from every object in every galaxy out there. When we imagine the universe, in our heads or in books and fantasy genre films, we picture a giant bowl filled with stars, galaxies, black holes, and all matter of inconceivable, unbelievable objects. You may imagine it from the outside like an astronaut views Earth from above. But the universe doesn't need an outside perspective to exist, nor can we be absolutely sure that the picture is accurate, because current observations and measurements of the curvature of the universe indicate that it might be perfectly flat. So why haven't we found the edge of the universe yet? And if we haven't found an edge, how can we tell if it is, in fact, expanding? Imagine an ant inside a balloon. An ant walking inside can walk in any direction, and it would look like the surface was endless because it always comes back to where it started. So even though a surface of a balloon is a finite number of square units, there's no edge to it, no boundary since you can go forever in any one direction. There's also no center to the balloon. If we add more air to this balloon, the ant will see the surface getting further and further away. The greater the distance between the surface and the ant, the faster the object would be receding. And no matter what it ran, the speed the object recedes at will follow the same relations. But it's hardly that simple. A balloon expands into a three-dimensional space, and the same does not apply to the universe. By its very definition, the universe contains everything, so there's nothing outside which makes the question useless. Physicist Stephen Hawking said that if it is true that the universe came from nothing and brought everything into existence, then asking what lies beyond the universe would be to ask what lies north of the North Pole. The answer is, this is it. So now we wonder, are we asking the right question? Dr. Katie Mack, a theoretical astrophysicist in Australia, said it might be more helpful to think of the universe as getting less dense rather than expanding. That is, the concentration of matter in the universe is decreasing as the universe expands, so galaxies aren't moving away from us and each other through space. It's just that space itself is getting bigger and pushing the galaxies away. If there's intelligent life out there, they have perhaps come to the same conclusion as we have. Everything else is moving away in all directions, and the local galaxy is at rest. The actual size of the observable universe is 46 billion light-years in any direction. Anything outside that radius of 46 billion light-years is not visible to us. We couldn't even fathom a way to peek into what's outside. At least not yet, because the universe does not expand at a uniform rate. A fraction of a second after the Big Bang, there was accelerated expansion, followed by cooling and slightly slower expansion. 
whole regions of space will never be observable from Earth for that reason. Which means, if there is an edge to this balloon, it's so far away that we can't see it. It makes sense to assume that if we waited for a long, long time, we would be able to see further and that there would be no limit to how far we could see. But in a universe with dark energy, that isn't the case. Yes, the universe ages, but its expansion rate doesn't drop as a result of it. As time goes on, the more distant object will recede from our perspectives faster and faster. If the ant in the balloon came up with an equation to understand how fast the furthest objects were receding, it would work the same way anywhere else in the balloon's surface. There is a lot of the universe left to discover, but there is a limit to how much will be observable to us. What we see now may once leave our sights, but on the bright side, we would then know what lies outside the observable universe. Based on the expansion rate and the amount of dark energy we have, and the present cosmological parameters of the universe, we can calculate the future visibility limit. Right now, in a 13.8 billion year old universe, we can see 46 billion light years, and we know there are galaxies out there, right now, whose light is on the way to Earth, but just hasn't had the opportunity to reach us yet. If you added up all the galaxies in parts of the universe Earth can see but can't access, you'd find that there are more galaxies hidden from us than there are visible. Scientists estimate an additional 2.7 trillion galaxies waiting to show us their light, on top of the 2 trillion we can already access. We roughly view only 43% of the galaxies we might one day see. Knowing that, we can assume that the unobservable universe wouldn't be too different from what we can already see. The way we know that is through observations of the cosmic microwave background and the large-scale structure of the universe. If the universe was limited, or its properties began to change the further we saw, we would be able to detect that. From what we can see, the universe is neither positively nor negatively curved. So if it does curve back on itself, the unobservable universe is at least 250 times as large as the presently visible part. Could we ever see that far? The future visibility limit will take us to distances that are presently 61 billion light years away, but no further. It will reveal slightly more than twice the volume of the universe we can observe today. On the other hand, the unobservable universe must be at least 23 trillion light years in diameter and contain a volume of space that's over 15 million times as large as the volume we can observe. It's unlikely we will ever be able to view what happened the first few moments after the Big Bang. Those moments are far back in history now. And if we found a way to glance far back enough, the opaque, superheated plasma that existed in the early moments would block our view. But in the meantime, there are other observable phenomena such as primordial gravitational waves, primordial black holes, and yet-to-be-found galaxies. And until then, the story of our universe and what lies outside the observable universe will continue to be debated and written about.